It's DJ Double here, and today I'm joined by Crazy Cousins in the building. Yes, Flukes. what's going on? What's going on, man? You good? What's good? I'm blessed, man. How you doing? I'm all right, bro. I'm good. very good. Uh, it's, it feels weird introducing Crazy Cousins yeah. with just one guy in the building. Yeah, a lot of people... I need to just, like, set the record straight now. It's like, I was always the producer in Crazy Cousins, and I had my good friends around me who were part of it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was always the pro- producer of the of all the tracks and stuff like that. And they would support me with like MC and yeah. just being part of the crew. So obviously as you get older, everyone goes, does this, goes yeah, their separate yeah, yeah. ways. So it's just, I was the only one standing. Right, I see, I see. So it was more of a collective and you exactly. were always the beat maker yeah, there and the guy yeah. producing the beats. It's always good to like, sometimes just turn over a new leaf start a new chapter and just explore different avenues so right. yeah i've got um new manager who's wicked at the moment lloyd we got to lloyd he's he's dope he's the guy is always working he's, he's never stopping so Sick. yeah he's just a work fanatic that's what you need in a manager <laughs> that's so what you need. we're looking at crazy cousins 2.0 was it beneficial to you having your uncle as a music teacher in school Oh, so you done your research then? I, see. I know my stuff, man. I do, I do my research. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was so beneficial. Like my uncle was in primary school. He was a music teacher, so it was like I, I always was influenced by his music, even though he made like a lot of like reggae stuff and it was like school plays and stuff. But it was good to be a part of that scene where you've got my uncle was like such an influence to the stage where when we done school plays, I would always be down there before everyone was there kind of thing and just setting up and being a part of the production team. So it was a bit of an advantage to have, (laughs) but it was good and I made the most of it. Was there much favouritism going on there? Well, everyone's going to be biased towards their family, isn't it? Of course there was. (laughs) Of course there was. Um, What's your roots? Like, what's your heritage? So I'm half English, half Jamaican. And do you know what? I need to get out to Jamaica. I haven't been in the past 12 years and I feel like... I've, I'm owed to go, like I'm, I owe it to Jamaica to get out there and to be part of that scene yeah. to see everything that's popping up over there. So connect with some yeah. musicians, man. I feel like that could be Definitely. that could be some amazing stuff coming yeah, out of that. Yeah, who knows what can come out of there? Book so. the ticket, bro. I'll come with you, man. I'll come with you. <laughs> um, what instruments do you play? Because you play a lot of live instruments, right? That's right. I started with the piano, keyboard, and then I went on to saxophone, drums, and then I moved on to. Elect- ele- um, electronic production so I started on Reason and Cubase and yeah to all the, the new producers out there people that are trying to step step forward onto the scene I'd say just be original in your productions just um, look at go onto YouTube videos and be around other people that's the best way to to get influence in, and to be a part of like new music is to just get yourself out there get heard go onto YouTube channels and, and get a real feel for it. So, yeah, yeah. sick. Good advice for new producers. Mm. How do you feel as like, as an accomplished musician with so many instruments that you can you can play, mm. how do you feel with the way technology has advanced now, making it so easy? So like, for example, if I wanted to make a beat, mm. but I wanted to use a saxophone, yeah, I can just plug in my saxophone VST exactly. and hit the keys as slowly go. as I want and put it all in. I don't have to play it live. How do you feel about that, having spent the time to learn the instruments? I feel like you have to keep with the times. There's no point in trying to be stuck in one era and not moving forward. So the fact that you have all this, all these MIDI instruments and you've got all these VSTs, you've got so many plugins online now, so take advantage of that. If they're there, use them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it still works. Not to say that you still can't be trained in a classical way and learn from the roots, but at the same time, I think like you can definitely learn a lot from new new ways of, of making music. Yeah, yeah, the tools are there for a reason, exactly. I guess, right? Yeah. So Crazy Cousins as a brand, you guys were responsible for what I think was a huge portion of like the UK funky scene. Mm. Um it was, I mean, it was massive. There was a time I remember being in Ayanapa in 2009 and literally like, I could have played a whole hour long set of crazy, this is how I feel, I could have played a whole hour long set of Crazy Cousins productions and the place would have been vibey for the whole time. I think I just went on a rampage and just started making all these productions. And when you're on a roll, when you've got that momentum and people spare you on, you, you can be so, so surprised how much work you can do and people just giving that uplifting feeling 
of like and then especially going abroad and hearing it in, in Napa that gives you yeah. more inspiration you're like whoa like my tunes are getting played in places that I didn't even know about because Napa was new to me in 2009 yeah. I remember just turning up to the strip and being like this place is mad I want I want some more of this I want to yeah. be part of this and yeah like you got so many clubs out there Club Ice um other ones. Abyss was Abyss one of the was ones crazy. that was one of yeah. the main ones at the time as well. Ice and Abyss, uh, Ice and, and black Abyss. and white as well. Yeah, so shame. I don't even know if INAP is still to that stage now. Is it? I, th- I don't know if it's as good as it was back then. Yeah. I know it's still doing things. I think Abyss has closed down. Yeah, Ice is still doing bits, black and white still doing bits. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know that that whole UK funky era, man, was. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was a lot of I'm fun. I'm glad to have seen it and yeah. been a part of it as a DJ. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Why do you think the genre died a death the way it did? Because it kind of had a lot of momentum. It had so much potential and it just stopped. Mm. That's how I feel. Like. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say it's, it's died because I'm gigging out every weekend. And for one, the people that I'm playing out to are 17, 18 year olds. So... When Funky originally came about, they were like eight or nine. So yeah. it's it's nostalgic music to them. Maybe they're older brothers or sisters. They could have been listening to the music before. And now they've got a chance to go out raving and they're still into that kind of music. So I wouldn't say it's died. It definitely had a slope, like all genres do. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like for a genre to thrive, it needs to have enough producers in the scene. It needs to have people willing to... to make music all the time and it's and i think funky got to a stage where there wasn't enough material out there look at garage if you go to garage there's thousands of tracks yeah rap yeah, yeah. grime there's literally so many tunes whereas funky if you're going to hear a set you're more likely going to hear the same tune that you've heard yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, and that's course. just being honest so i think it just needed more material and people are still making so much funky now like big up to roscar murder he wrote um uh, I had a dream. There's a lot of people making some. Do you still good... consider that funky? Yeah. Yeah, it's got funky elements. But now I think the doors are just open, and you can't just close. In you can't just like make one genre of music. Like there's so many different types, so you can't just box in. Oh, I'm making funky now. All this sounds different to funky. It's it's just about how you feel and how your music comes across to others. It doesn't have to be one particular type of genre skrillex is a perfect he's example dope. of a producer that can just make because see he's made all the proper nasty dubstep yeah, like yeah. baseline wobbly stuff and then he can make something like sorry for justin bieber exactly he's, and he's super talented crazy and yeah is that something that so would you say like for you versatility is the key because i mean especially with the new record now yeah that's like a it's a it's an afrobeats kind of exactly i wouldn't say it was a uk funky record no the new track no way um it's definitely got afrobeat elements to it um and at the same time i try to keep consistent to the the drum rhythms and the rhythmics of funky so it's still got the the offbeat snares in there uh, it's a lot slower it's like 114 so mm-hmm. It's hard to mix in with funky, but you can still do it if you <laughs> if you stretch the, <laughs> if you pitch it up, yeah. you pitch down there, meet so, at like one twenty or yeah, something, right? Yeah, or you just press the sync button if you want to do it. <laughs> so yeah, so but it's it's got such a good response so far. I mean, it's it's been it's been crazy. I mean, Young Bane and Mr. Easy alone, they've got a huge following. So yeah, it's it's been amazing just seeing it slowly, organically grow. And it's doing really well on Spotify, on iTunes at the moment. So mm. yeah. Smart move getting all of those people involved because yeah. Young Bane's obviously, I like to call him like the Travis Scott of what the UK is yeah. doing right now. Yeah, like he's yeah, a very yeah. popular artist. Definitely. So versatile as well. He's like a chameleon. He can go on yeah, yeah. any type of music and, and sound And he fits good. the tune so well as well. Like Precisely. He's... Mr. Easy, of course, has got things popping in Nigeria, like yeah. in the African scene. Yeah. He's huge. So why did you, is this, is that the reason that you picked these two guys? Um, well, I'm fans of their music anyway, before I even thought about getting them on a the tune. And it just came, it came so natural. I mean, Young Bane's management, they heard the tune, they were like, this is sick. And then we reached out to Mr. Easy, he heard it before anyone was even on it, just the instrumental. Right. And they both loved the tune and they both done verses to it and it just, it just worked. Um, and Lily McKenzie, 
she's on the vocals she has the first verse and the chorus so everything just seemed to to just blend together and it was mm. just like the perfect mix so i don't think it was it wasn't masterminded but it just seemed to happen organically, organically. that's the one. i love that brother and so in so many instances i'm finding like music that does come together like that yeah it's the best kind of music like Definitely. nothing's forced it's just like oh you like it you like it yeah cool it's a vibe. let's, let's put it, it all together um it's like it's such a summer sounding song. Yeah. But it's really impacting now and we're in September. I know. Do you feel like cuz obviously you must have, when did you make it? I made this tune like maybe 18 months ago. Oh wow, that so, long ago, yeah. Yeah, so I've been patient and waiting for the right time for it to come out. Yeah. I mean, summer tune, you don't really get a summer in England anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> So it could come out any time and it's well, give or take it's not going to really be like a sunshine tune in England anyway but it's doing well in like um in Sweden it's doing well in France so it's not just made for the UK right um and I just feel like you can't like I said before just don't try and plan things for a particular time or plan music for a particular genre just make it because it feels right it's a good vibe and then you're more likely to to be happy with the outcome yeah yeah sick is it part of a bigger project or is this just like a standalone single no it's definitely part of a bigger bigger project i'm just gonna try and get an ep together and an album and work with so many other artists and it's just a it's a welcome back basically it's saying right. like yeah I'm back here to stay now um you made a record like i think it was in what was it like 2010 2011 with amarian arch your yeah, back yeah now for me that was one like it was sort of in the wake of the UK funky era. Mm. And it so could have been that thing that really propelled Crazy Cousins up to that next yeah, level. Like, yeah. it could have been such a chart and pop success, I feel. Yeah. But it never really impacted. Yeah, I think there was a few a few different reasons. One was because this was just previous to Amarion being signed to Maybach Music. Right. So he was at that stage, that limbo stage where... They weren't didn't, really sure. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't too sure he was still a massive artist and he still is but he wasn't that level that he is yeah, yeah, yeah. seen now so that came just before so maybe that helped him do you know what i mean propel him to getting looked at by maybach music and rick ross mm -hmm. um another thing was um pon pon the floor major laser pon the floor that came out like maybe a year before or maybe a year and a half before so that sound was very like their sound right and then beyonce brought out that run the run the world right yeah, yeah so it was like there's too many tunes that sound the same here so yeah. something's got to give and uh, i think it did connect in a certain way the video kind of connected but it's one of those things you just gotta you, you're never gonna know what's gonna happen with a track and as long as you and yourself know that you've produced like the best that you can do of the music and people like it then that's it you can't always you don't always know if it's going to connect with with your audience. Yeah. So yeah. win some and lose some. I exactly. Guess. It was released on Disturbing London, right? Yeah, it was released on Disturbing London. Shout out to Dummy, big up to Tiny Temper. So I've known them for years. So it's wifey good. rhythm days, right. the <laughs> early times. We're, We're going, going back now. That's like minus crazy cousin one point zero. That was a long time. <laughs> so <laughs> what was that? Wifey existed. rhythms like what two thousand and six, two thousand and seven yeah. time. Yeah. It makes you sound old, man. I feel old. That's like a good, what, 12 years ago I made that tune. 11 years. Yeah, so been doing music for a long time now. I'm 20, 28 now, so yeah. started young. And it's been it's been a wicked experience. It's been good to go from, so, going from so many different genres of music, going from grime to funky to dabbling in garage to doing a bit of bass line and bass house now. So, yeah, never stopping. Yeah, sick. Putting in the work with Tiny on such an early part of his career. Like, I feel like Wifey Rhythm was, I think that was probably the song that really put him on a lot of people's radar. Like before Pass yeah, Out obviously yeah. came. It was Wifey Rhythm. It's like, oh, who's this guy, Tiny Tim? But like, yeah. I, I feel outside of London, I'm talking about. Inside, yeah. he obviously had his own thing going. Do you feel any way about, do you feel like you kind of carved any part of his career and the path, um, or is it literally, was it just a track for you? Because it was a sick tune, bruv. Wifey yeah, Rhythm was done, bad. It, it done really well, and it got leaked out, like, funny enough. So I didn't even send it to Tiny. I just had it on my computer, and then I didn't know what to do with it. And then I remember, I don't know if you remember LimeWire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and LimeWire just basically leaked all my tunes because I... Ow. 
How did that happen? I think like online where there was like a shared folder. So all my music was in the shared folder. Right. So they automatically uploaded, which is a blessing in disguise, to yeah. be fair, because it would never have got heard. Tiny would never have been on the tune. So everything happens for a reason, right? And I think Tiny, he catapulted that tune because he'd done a video for it. He had a plan behind it where everyone was doing tracks for their their misses and like they were just doing these sob stories to just give it to their girlfriend. Tiny yeah. was like, no, nah, look, I'm going to make this into a, an actual record. I'm going to make this into yeah. a track. So, um, yeah, going back to the question, do I feel like I've elevated his career? I think that he made it in himself. Like he didn't, he, it could have easily been another tune. Yeah. But he, he brought it to that level where he gave it to the, the masses and the media and, and he managed to to push through just being a wife rhythm. It was just now another a record. Girl yeah, yeah, it was actually exactly. a single. So what? So the instrumental leaked through LimeWire and Tyler Everything. did a version or <laughs> you recorded with him and that leaked. Oh no, the instrumental leaked and that's when right. everyone managed to get their hands on the instrumental. So. Right, okay, okay. So Tiny's found it and then yeah. done that. Right, yeah. okay. I yeah, never so realised that. About, so. Have you ever... Had, so do you know each other though, right? You, yeah, yeah. Because we done... After wife rhythm, he was like, Flukes, I need another track that sounds... Like kind of similar, and I remember giving him Hood Economics, and he done a video to that as well. Right, okay, so I, I didn't realise that. We should yeah, so it. he done that as well. I gave him like a load, a load of tracks, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll just pick these ones and this one." So he's very smart. He knows what he knows what sound he's looking for, and he knows how to to give it to his audience. Yeah. So other music that you've got, I recently heard Ariba, and um, yeah. is it how do you pronounce the other one? Masai. Masai. Yeah. Masai. It's a yeah. very like. Tribal. African kind of tribal yeah. house sounding tunes. Yeah. And what was it? Was that off Nostalgic EP? Is that what the project was called? Yeah, the label's Nostalgic. It's my own label. Right, okay. That, um, the, the reason why I've done the label is because I don't like to rely on other people and I like to be able to be free. And if I want to release something, I can, rather than it just sitting around for ages. And with a commercial record, that's fine because I, can, I get it has to grow. And you have to obviously just wait in line for the right time to release something but if you want to just give something to the underground and get a tune out in the clubs sometimes you have to strike while the iron's hot mm. so i thought to myself let me put out my own um ep on my own label and i've got n there's no middlemen i can just release it when i want and that's the main thing and I, that's great advice to people that don't know how to get their music out there yeah um and then just think, you know what? I'm just going to do it myself. Why not? Like, what's Sign there to yourself lose? To yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's sick. As a DJ as well, yeah. it must be amazing being able to make music. So do you think of it from a DJ perspective? Like, yeah. when you're making music, are you thinking the drop here is going to bang in the club? Do you know? Does it come yeah. that way around or do you just produce it and then make it work into DJ sets? I think you've always got to be like wary of how a tune is going to sound in the club. Um, that's why a lot of producers they kind of cave their self into their studio and they never see they never see real life they never go out to the clubs and yeah. see why tracks are, are working um, but at the so same time on the other side of it you can't overthink when you're making a track because you can just get into that state where nothing's clicking because you're thinking right how's this going to work why is this not trying to force it yeah exactly so having a, a balance between the two is, yeah. is key who would be your ultimate collaboration like Dead or alive, if you could have any artist ever on your beat. That's an easy yeah. one. Like Timberland is like my favourite producer. He always oh, okay. has been. Yeah. So he his productions like from Aaliyah to like Jay-Z, Kanye, like Drake. He's literally done everyone. He's the, the king. For me, he's the king. So yeah. if I could do a production with him, that would be sick. Let's talk about Drake using Do You Mind? Quite early on, as soon as I heard the record, I had a conversation with Kyla about it. So I know the backstory, but I want to hear your side of the story. Um, it was something about, uh, I think she said it was New Year's, uh, no, sorry, it was April, April Fool's, Fool's Day. Fool's, yeah, yeah. So for you, was did you find out at the same time, like April Fool's Day, you found yeah, out? Yeah, I found out um, through Kyla's management and they were like, uh, you, you've been sampled by a, by a superstar. I was like, whatever, what are you talking about? No chance. I was like, I was like, who is it? They're like, who do you think? So I started going through all the names and what stuff. What names like, did you think? Who was the first person that came to you? Nicki Minaj came to my head for some reason. Right. And then I thought, um, that's, that's weird because they were in the same camp. So yeah. I knew it was, something was just ringing in my head. This is something about young money here. <laughs> and then 
they told us it was Drake. I was like, oh my God. And I had to just digest it for a second. I remember I was yeah, eating my food yeah. and I was like, oh, let me just take take some time now. And then we couldn't even hear the track because a lot of his stuff gets leaked. And they wouldn't email it. They wouldn't email. I, I don't even, I think they might have even heard like a snippet over the phone. And that was all they were getting. I didn't even hear it. I had right. to wait till Tuesday and it came out. And I was like, so you had to wait till the actual release. Yeah, of like the with song. everyone else. <laughs> wow. So, I, what was your? I mean, so taking it back, right back to the beginning. So, do you mind? Was the original record, and Did, then obviously there was Crazy Cousins remix. So it was go. the funky because the original was a baseline track. I remember it. Yeah. And then Crazy, the ones that the one that really went stellar was the the, the funky, funky remix. One, yeah. That was the one that just took over two thousand and nine and onwards. Yeah. So that's the part they sampled. And now what's your involvement there then? If you've not heard it till release, how were they allowed? See, I've heard mixed I've heard mixed stories of how Drake actually heard the track. Yeah. One was his radio station, that OVO radio. Yeah. Um, in Toronto. So apparently someone was playing it on the A station. DJ played it, yeah. Yeah. So he heard it. He was like, yo, I want to do something with this. And also I've heard that Logan Sama, um, showed him the track because he posted on his instagram one time yeah to logan and exactly. something about guidance with do you mind yeah and obviously like drake's like connected with way better know as well mm. so i think maybe they've gone out one night they've heard the track so he might have heard it different times it might have not just been one occasion yeah and then i think logan was the guy who brought everything together and obviously other people in the team as well and and that's how it came about and I, I think Drake has said that he wasn't even sure how the tune was going to connect with people because he he released Popstar at the same time yeah, with Jay-Z and Kanye on it. So he released those two records just just in case one of them... Yeah, you know, yeah. if you've got that bit of Polar doubt in your mind. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So I think he released them at the same time and was like, look, if you don't like this, then you can have that. If you don't like that, you can have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just, it went straight to number one. It stayed at number one for... Forever. Th- yeah, for <laughs> <ages>. <laughs> for <us. laughs> Mad. Time. I think it's the longest reigning number one in this whole digital era, which is yeah. like 14 weeks. Bro, it broke the world. Yeah, like. it's got 1.3 billion streams on Spotify. It's mad, mad numbers. like Insane. Yeah. Without without talking and asking for a specific number, how was the breakdown for you as... So were you credited as like a producer or were you paid as a sample? Like, do you get royalties from it or what? How does it work for you? Usually, with a remix, you shouldn't... You don't normally get any royalties. Right. But because Kyla's family... And that we just came to agreement that works for everyone, which was good. And they didn't, no one, if you, that's the thing. If you're, if you make a remix, then even if that remix blows up bigger than the original, and a lot of people be like, oh, well, it blew up. I, I made that, that track big what it is. But yeah. if you didn't, if you wasn't there in the studio while that track was being produced, then it's always going to it's going to be a remix and right, okay. you're not entitled to royalties unless you come to that agreement right with the producer um so it it worked out good it worked out good in the end and it's everything that comes after it as well it's not just yeah, yeah, the track course. it's the the bookings that come and <coughs> and having like, being able to travel around the world and working with other producers as well so sometimes you got to look at the bigger picture rather than just what's happening there and then yeah so, long term yeah as a producer, how did you feel when you heard it? Because it wasn't... When I heard it, it's not even like a 320 bit rate sample, is it? I know. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's just like... It's like they've just... I don't know. It's like they've time stri- like yeah. I don't know what they've done with it, but yeah. it's not even a proper high quality I know, sample. I so for you, as the original producer of that, and even One Dance, the song structure, the arrangement is very unconventional. Like mm. it's not verse, hook, yeah, yeah. bridge, like, et cetera, et cetera. So how did you feel when you heard the record? For me, I was, I was like, okay, this is this is different. I'm gonna. It took a while because I remember we was in the office. I was in, I've got an office in um, Brick Lane, and I was there with my two good friends, and we had the tune on repeat for ages, just and slowly sinking in it. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. At first, I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work, to be honest. And then it was only when I heard it out, and I was like, 
this sounds tough. If you yeah, hear it in a club, yeah. it sounds banging. I was like, okay, this this is different now. And yeah, the sample rate thing was was weird. It was like it did sound very like muffled, and it sounds like they've just snipped it from a YouTube clip or something. Like a yeah. mixtape somewhere, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Like taking it off someone's mixtape. And... That's the vibe. That's the vibe at the end of the day. And if it works, then not everything has to be so clean cut and yeah, yeah, yeah. and so clinical. Do you know what I mean? So and they've proved that point by exactly. fifteen zillion streams and Shh. eight years at number one. But I think he's producer as well, forty. Noah Forty, he's like a G as well. The way he can make a tune into like a proper record. He can, like, if you see his studio, it's crazy. He's like a, he, he is like a genius. Yeah. So a lot of Drake's success is because of Forty as well. I'm a fan of his work, man. Yeah, I'm, he's I'm, dope. A, I'm a big fan of what he does. I mean, I guess you must be as a producer as well. Like, yeah, yeah. I like definitely to someone to look up dig to. Dig a bit deeper, not just like the surface. Look at what who's behind the scene, who's, who's influencing who. So, yeah. yeah. That's sick, man. Um, what artists are you watching right now? Like, who have you got your eyes on? Um, I'd say who's who's sick at the moment. I like Mist for some reason. I've heard a lot of his tracks, and I think he's got a vibe. He sounds sick. Um, who else is really doing it at the moment? I'm trying to think. Kind of put me on the spot with that one. There's so many artists, so I'm trying to think. I like Big Zoo. Big Zoo. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. His flow is sick. Um, Spyro's doing doing a lot right now. Um, holy goof just because I listen to so many different mu- different types of music like, yeah. I, I'm not just thinking about one different scene so what about you? I'm I'm a huge fan of Young Bane yeah like I know he's not really an up and comer anymore but yeah. I, I think like he's just getting started yeah. bro yeah I think so too I think he's gonna go on he's gonna go stellar I believe he will be like an international star mm. um, who else? so there's one one guy I know who's a singer so if you're ever looking for a singer, look this guy up. His name's Sam Tompkins. Sam Tompkins. Sick. Oh, right. Like incredible voice this kid's got. Really? Mad. Sick. So he's they're they're definitely there on my list right now. Cool. But it's a tricky one. I I usually need my computer in front of me yeah, so I can yeah, look through. Oh, yeah, them, them, them. I've got them all in a folder, just not yeah. stored in my brain. What's next for Crazy Cousins? So the next single is coming out very soon, working on some ideas. I'm just hibernating the studio. Working hard, um, and it's going to be something more upbeat. It's going to be something more to the the tempo of what I'm used to, the funky house tempo. So that's cool. Just look out for that. Um, check us out. I'm playing at a Ceremony Festival end of the month, um, and rinse rinse out birthday bash. I think in Cornwall, I believe that is, and a few other places as well. You can check it out on um, Resident Advisor or on my profile page on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's just Crazy Cousins. So yeah, check it out. Sick. I appreciate your time, bro. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate DJ it. DJ Double with Crazy Cousins.